Hello, welcome to this Math 21 review video about the mean value theorem and the first derivative test for relative extrema. So let's start. Start by recalling the mean value theorem. It says that if f is a function such that f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then there's a number c within this open interval such that this equation holds. Um, the equation looks kind of big and bulky, but this is what it's really saying. Um, we have a function f. Let's say it has this graph. Then um, we can interpret this right side as the slope of the tangent line connecting the two endpoints. The slope of this line here. Why? Because let's label this f of a. This one. Why? Because this numerator here is just the rise as you go from f of a to f of b, right? It's the rise. While the denominator is b minus a, which is the run as you go from a to b. So rise over run is just the slope of this line connecting the two endpoints of the function. Now, how about this left side? Um, it says that there's a number c, um, a number c in between a and b. And it says that the slope of the tangent line at c, this one, f prime of c, the slope of the tangent line at c is the same as the slope of this line. So um, the mean value theorem only just says this. It says that there is a C with this property. And um, I hope this, this drawing can help you remember the formula. Okay, so let's move on. Um, we also have the first derivative test for relative extrema. And it says that if F is a function continuous on the open interval from A to B, and which contains the number C, and if we also suppose that F is differentiable on the open interval from A to B, except possibly at C, then we have that if F prime is positive for all X within this interval and negative for all X in this interval, then F has a relative maximum at C. Um, if you draw that as a graph, a good example of this is the, um, the parabola opening downward. We see that um, on this portion of the interval, the derivative is positive, but on this portion, it's negative, right? Therefore, we have a relative maximum at C, okay? Um, we also have this one. If f prime is negative for all x in the first portion of the interval, and positive on the next portion. Here we're just flipping the signs. We get that f has a relative minimum at x equals c. Um, for this one, the picture you can use is a parabola opening upward. This we see that f prime is negative here and positive here. Therefore, at c, it has a relative minimum. Lastly, if f prime doesn't change signs, then we have no relative extremum at c. One last example, you can, you can imagine an increasing function like this. Um, here, the derivative is always positive. So it doesn't change signs as it moves from this interval to this interval. Therefore, we do not we, we do not have a relative extremum at C. In particular, we have um, values greater than the value at C, these values here, right? Okay, so when you apply this theorem, if you want to finding, if you want to find um, the relative extremum points of a function, Extrema. I want to find the relative extrema of f. 
you usually follow um, three steps. The first step is to find the critical numbers of the function. Now, these are points in the domain of f, which make f prime zero or non-existent. The keywords here are that um, the critical numbers are in the domain of f. In domain f. Okay, for the next step, we make a table of signs. Signs of f prime. And when we make a table of signs, we use the critical numbers and points outside domain of f. What do I mean by this? Um, So this is a table. We want our dividers to include the critical numbers. So if, for example, two is a critical number in the domain of f, we put two there. But we also need a, um, to include points outside of the domain. For example, f isn't defined at four. So we also have to put that there. Um, or else our signs might be um, wrong as we move from interval to interval. So important, you have to include that. Um, also, just put in the signs of f prime on these uh, blocks here. We'll, we'll see an example of that later. And then lastly, um, we conclude using this theorem. This theorem. But remember, when we find, when we, um, single out the relative extrema, we can only have critical numbers. Um, because points outside the domain of F can't be relative extrema. Only those inside the domain can be. So only critical numbers. Okay, let's move on to some problems. Um, problem one, given F equals the square root of one minus sine of X, prove that there's no such C um, within this interval from negative pi over two to three pi over two, such that this uh, equality holds. So you can pause the video right now to try it yourself. Okay, hope you tried it yourself and were successful, but um, now I'm gonna give you the solution. And after that, I'll talk about how this relates to the main value theorem. So solution first, since we want to examine f prime, let's take the derivative of f. So we take the derivative and um, you can apply the chain rule to, to obtain this. I'll leave it to you to verify. And then we simplify it. Now we want, um, we want f prime to be defined. So um, we examine the denominator we, we see that one minus sine of x has to be positive for f prime to be defined because there's a square root here. Okay, so one minus sine x should be positive, um, which means x shouldn't be pi over two. After doing that, um, we examine um, f prime further. We know that for all c within these intervals, we have f prime of c is equal to this one, the derivative. Um, but we also notice that it's not equal to zero because as you can check, cosine of C or C in these intervals is not equal to zero. However, uh, this quantity, which is the one, um, the one that we wanted to be equal to F prime of C, this quantity is equal to uh, zero. So there is no C within this interval such that F prime of C is equal to um, this one. Because we said that F of prime of C is not zero. Okay, hope that's clear. So going back here, you might, you might ask yourself, um, right, we can apply the mean value theorem to this function and then obtain such a C with, with this equality. But the thing we have to remember about the mean value theorem is that it has conditions. 
first f has to be continuous on the closed interval. And f has to be differentiable, the open interval. And um, so you need these two conditions in order to invoke it and, and be certain that there is a C um, in this interval with, with this equation. Uh, but uh, if you recall, when we took the derivative, we said that x shouldn't be equal to pi over 2 for the derivative to be defined, which means that f isn't differentiable on this interval. It's not differentiable at pi over 2. In fact, f looks something like this. This is pi over 2. Yeah, so f is not differentiable on the whole interval. And we can't use the mean value theorem. So um, in summary, whenever you invoke a theorem, you have to check that the conditions are satisfied or else you might get a wrong conclusion. So conditions are very important. Okay, so let's move on. Find all the relative extrema of um, f, which is equal to this polynomial. So um, for the second problem, you can pause again and try it yourself. All right, so um, I'll give you the solution. Now recall when you're finding extrema of a function, the first step is to look for critical numbers. Um, critical numbers. So let's first find the derivative of f. Um, derivative of this, uh, you can use the, the sum and power rule and take the derivative of each term separately. So you get this. Um, we want to simplify it. So let's factor and simplify. Okay. So the critical numbers are points in the domain which make f prime zero or non-existent. In this case, it's negative one, one, and three because they make f prime zero. Second step, we make a table of signs. So remember the table of signs includes critical numbers and points outside the domain. But since f is defined everywhere, um, there's no points outside the domain, so it's just these. So um, we, we plot the intervals in between the dividers, and then we check the signs of f prime. Here it's negative, positive, negative, and positive. You can verify that. Okay, so the third step now is to use the first derivative test to conclude. Um, you can... Um, to help you remember what the first derivative test says, you can imagine like a parabola. So for example, negative, it would go down. Positive means it goes up, which means there's a relative minimum here. Um, over here, if it's positive, negative, positive derivative, negative derivative, then this is a maximum. But here, if it's negative and positive again, and that's another minimum. Okay, these uh, illustrations are not um, accurate to the function f. They're just uh, like uh, illustrations of the first derivative test, which might help you. Okay, so from the table, f has relative extrema. It has maximums at one and a minima at negative one and three. So, that's the answer. Okay, last problem. Find all the relative extrema of f, which is equal to x to the two over three minus x to the one over three. I'll give you some time to pause and try this yourself. Okay, so again, we follow the same procedure. First step, critical numbers. So we take the derivative 
Um, you can use the sum and power rule again to obtain this. We simplify and we ask, um, when is this equal to zero? It's equal to zero when X is equal to, um, when the numerator is equal to zero. So um, from this, you get that X should be equal to one over eight. Then you ask, when is this non-existent? Um, it's non-existent when the denominator is equal to zero. And this means that X should be equal to zero. Okay. So those are our critical numbers. Second step, table of signs. Um, critical, um, remember to put the critical numbers and points outside the domain in your dividers. And let's do the same procedure. Um, you can verify that these are the signs. And last, last step, we invoke the first derivative test. So negative, negative, you can imagine something like this. Um, so this has no relative extremum. Negative, positive negative and then positive that might have a minimum that has a minimum so we conclude that there is a relative minimum at one over eight so that's the answer and um, that's all for this video i hope you learned something and good luck for your test